Welcome to, we've got to come up with a name for this, don't we? Thursday Garden Chat, or surely we can get a little more creative than that. But hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to talk about, hi, Graham. I want to talk about January gardening. It's a slow month, and yet it's kind of been really busy. So I want to kind of go over that. Hello, hi, Leanne. Hi, Amelia. Good to have you all in. Uh, sorry about last week. I uh, Hi, Margaret. Uh, I had a bout of insomnia that lasted from, I think, New Year's Eve to the... Actually, I didn't have a good night's sleep until that next Thursday. So, yeah, that was just, and I was kind of like a zombie for real. So I didn't want to share that with all of you because you don't need to see that. Uh, but so sorry about that. So here we are again, and I'm so happy to be here. Uh, hi, Jean. Hello, Scottish wild man. Hi, Stephen. Good to have you all in here. So uh, I don't know if you've been following, I'm doing this thing called January. So we're making all kinds of jam in the kitchen right now. Uh, and we made a great one today. I think so far, this one might be my favorite. That'll go out uh, next Tuesday. It is uh, mango jalapeno. So good. Uh, and you don't, we took all the heat, well, most of the heat out. And then we use lem lime juice instead of lemon juice. Fat, it's a little bit more savory of a jam, which is kind of more what I like. So this might, might kind of be my favorite. Hi, Carleen. Hi, Robin from Chicagoland. Pauline, good to see you. Uh, so gardening. Well, you know, I'm going to talk kitchen first, just for a few minutes. Very busy in the kitchen right now. I was encouraged to start sprouting because I do the microgreen thing and all that, but I've never sprouted. So I have some black uh, beluga lentils that are starting to sprout and I'm sprouting some kale. So I, and I, that'll come out in a video too. I'm kind of uh, following, you know, trying to document that a little bit. Uh, the belugas sure look like uh, the lentils are doing much better than the kale seems to be doing. Uh, but, you know, everything, I think the seeds do their own thing, right? And maybe the lentils were just more, uh, more or maybe are more easy to sprout. So anyway, so that's going on in my kitchen. I'm also fermenting some garlic cloves in honey. So that experiment is going next to uh, all of the other jars. And today we restarted um, sourdough. I'm trying to, I, and if it kills me, I'm going to get this done. I want to grow, I want to make gluten-free sourdough. So I'm, uh, this is my third try at um, making a starter. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, just started it today, so we'll see how it looks after a few more days here, and I'll be documenting that as well. So that's kind of keeps me busy uh, when the gardening season is a little, we can take a breath and think about other things uh, that don't always, you know, require us to be outside doing things. Now, as far as planting, uh, I think all of us uh, from the potty mouth, garden club have started our onions. Uh, mine are doing quite well. My Elsa Craig's uh, have done almost nothing. I think they were older seeds. So I have ordered new ones and uh, we'll kind of re, re sow those because that's one of my favorite onions. Um, but they're all up and going. I've started my artichokes uh, and they're all up now, uh, because here where I am, uh, I, I, artichokes are an annual 
So I the the bigger the plant I can get in once the grounds warm up, the better I have at actually either getting an artichoke or watching it flower. I think either way with artichokes, both works for me. So I, I don't get too upset if I miss one and uh, it goes to flower because their flowers are, I think they're just spectacular. So um, yeah, so those are in. I've started my ginger, which, um, and I just buy organic ginger from the grocery store and let it go. And again, ginger is one of those things that once you start it, it seems like forever until it uh, starts showing any life. It's just about when you're ready to throw it out and go, okay, this was a bad, bad choice. Uh, th then you start seeing green. And once you start uh, picking them up and looking up, there's this incredible web of roots that it has to develop before it shoots anything up. So I think with ginger, the, the rule is be really patient and uh, let, it, let it take its time. So that's kind of what I have started. Let me see here. I, I, it looks like a lot of people have just started their onions or re-sowed their onions. Uh, hi, Tanya and Sharon. Good to see you. Uh, oh, uh, Carline, if you know uh, the name of that channel, I would love, I would love to take a look at that because I. I am I don't have to be gluten free but I feel better when I am and I have a couple of friends who are gluten they need to be gluten free and I would love to be able to bake some bread for them um uh let's see uh Pauline is going to pot the onions on tomorrow. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, mine aren't quite ready. I know uh, Steve from Greenside Up, man, he he uh, pots his on really, really young. I have never done it that way. I wait till they get a little more substantial. Um, Scottish Wild Man is asking, do I ever grow Globo onions? I've never even heard of Globo onions. So, no, I have not. It's kind of a cool name, so I'm assuming they're large, right? That 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 seems like that's Oh, we've got some people that have, so uh Ellie's everyday whole grain sourdough. Uh thank you so much. I will I will check that out because I really I really really um I really want that to be successful. So uh, outside of onions, are anybody else, are any anybody sowing anything right now? Uh, I think this coming week, I'm going to look into, I'm going to look into uh, starting my celery. Want to get that a little head start here? I'm also going to go through my flowers. There are some flowers that just need uh, a, a real nice early start. And I also think I have some that I need to, um, they need a, a cold uh, start. So, and oh, I know what I want to talk about. Uh, winter sewing. Uh, it was probably the first video I did for YouTube was uh, my winter sewing. Here's the deal this year. It's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit here which uh what does that make it celsius uh subtract 30 and half so that's like five five or six celsius so it's not freezing right now and when you put winter sewing uh outside and just let the weather do its thing with it it needs to kind of be sitting in uh freezing temperatures so 
what I don't want to do is put it out right now when the weather is not as cold as it usually is this time of year. So I might not be able to um, start my winter sowing. And for those that don't know, winter sowing is where you put, you have containers that are kind of translucent, at least on the top. You have drainage holes uh, and you put anything in there. Uh, you put any seeds in there that might be perennial or that kind of self seed. Um, and you tape it up and you put it out and let nature take its course. And then you open them up as the, the temperatures start to warm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful hands-off kind of way to do it. And I'm a little leery this year because we're not, the weather is so up and down. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Um, so I think I might push that off uh, till closer to February because our February is usually our coldest month. So we'll see. Okay, we've got a question, a help question. I am following along with the hemp mat microgreens. Plastic wrap made cilantro mold, I think. I removed plastic, but now they are drying out too fast. Uh, now, what was, the, I, I'm not sure what the plastic wrap was for. Uh, because I, you know, once I, once my microgreens come up, I don't leave any covering over them. I just let them, uh, I water them as as the medium kind of starts drying out, uh, but I don't leave anything over them. So uh, let me see if you say anything else uh, about that, Robin, because I, uh, I know that mold can be a big issue with anything that you're kind of sprouting I'm more concerned about that happening in my sprouts because it's always kind of a wet, damp place. Um, but yeah, I would, I cover mine just until they start to uh, show signs of life. But it's it's more of a dark covering because I'm kind of emulating there in the ground uh, and put a little weight on it. And then I take all of that off and just let them go free. So, um, yeah. Let's see, Tanya's. Uh, she's holding off a bit longer for most seeds. I might sow broad beans soon. Uh, yes, because you can probably get those out um, depending on where you are earlier. Um, yeah, no, I think this is this is still like a really slow month for prepping for gardening. I think that's why I'm doing so many uh, other things in the kitchen that I didn't have time to do when the garden is really hot and happening. Uh, but it does give you a moment to look and see, like, what things do I really want to try to plant out uh, as a bigger plant? Obviously, we're, we're starting most things inside right now, depending on, again, where you're living. Um, oh, there's all kinds of... Oh, Steve. Stephen is in Minnesota, which here in the States is a pretty, I would say, a very cold state uh, at the winter. And so... Wow, you would have no problem doing winter sowing right now because that would keep those uh, those seeds would stay dormant uh, for their chill period. Yeah, that's cold, Stephen. Wow. Uh, oh yes. Um, oh, Pauline's allotment is underwater right now. Oh. Yeah, I've seen a whole lot of rain. I saw on another YouTube channel, I think it was Mark, uh, who's from Scotland, 
And I mean, his, he just got flooded. Yeah, the, I think the weather this year is, is it's going to be a challenge even here in the winter because so many things do need uh, the cold so that they know when it warms back up, it's time to start a new season. So I noticed in, I have a planter on my desk, on my deck uh, outside the kitchen and all my crocuses are starting to come up. And <laughs> I'm like, guys, uh, you've got like three months. So, but they're green and, and the edges now I notice they're brown. So I'm thinking, is, are they going to come back? at the right time or uh are we out of luck uh i did notice that my saffron crocus <clears throat> which i have had great success with uh didn't even flower this year because we went so quickly from it's nice it's nice it's nice to deep freeze to then warming up um So I don't know what that has what that means for next year. If the crocus are all dead, we'll do nothing next year, or if they might come back. Uh, I wonder, Stephen, when did you start your um, onion seeds last year? You said you started them too early. I am starting mine earlier this year just to kind of. Uh, you know, take a, a nod from the UK and we're going to do it on Boxing Day. So um, I started them actually on the 28th and, uh, I, you know, all bets are off. These might just be way too early and I'm going to have it bulbing before I even get it planted in the ground. So, um, yeah. But, you know, you never try, you never know, right? So. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, uh, Caroline, I'm happy, uh, happy, happy, happy to be here today. Just love chatting with all you guys. Uh, Jean is saying, Audrey, my bulbs are coming. Yes, it's it's weird. So I wonder what, and this was the first year we did some landscaping in the front of our home. And this is my first year that I put daffodils not daffodils i put in tulips and crocus uh in because i thought okay now we're i can i used to have them in pots so i could move them around but now i'm like no i can put them in the ground now um i don't know what's happening up front i really haven't investigated that much but that would really sadden me because um i'd like them to come up when they're supposed to and have that nice, beautiful spring that, you know, that oh, that would just make me happy. Um, so I was, as I was saying, like next week, I think I'm going to shoot for celery um, and some flowers. And then I'm going to give it a rest for a little bit. And, you know, February, mid-February is usually when things start to ramp up just a little bit. And by March, it's full steam ahead. So I have a couple, one more jam to make for January. Uh, and I think that's going to be um, a strawberry balsamic, which I think just sounds really good. Because um, I love strawberries with balsamic vinegar. So I think in a jam, that just might be like really nice. So um, I've got that coming up. And... Yeah, I think it's really time to get some of these flowers going. Oh, and I my my son was home over the holidays and he did um he did a drone shot of the lavender that I planted out in our front yard. So um that'll be coming up. He hasn't sent it to me yet. Once he sends it to me, I will they really look strong. And, you know, in the winter, the grass around them has pretty much gone dormant and died back a bit. Um, so the, the lavender really stands out. So the vision 
uh, I think the vision might be uh, coming true. So I will show you that um, once I get it. And well, Mel, uh, Amelia, do you do you not make jam because you don't like jam? Uh, and all the ones I'm making this month are low sugar, which instead of putting like six cups of sugar, it's like a cup of sugar. Um, and they, you can't taste the difference. It's pretty amazing. Uh, so I like it because I can, with this new pectin that I'm, I'm really trying it out. Um, uh, it's kind of a game changer, like, cause I, I like jam, but you know how it's usually just sugar with some fruit in it. Um, so I just love the the thought that, wow, I could have some and it's not just too much sugar. Um, you use the fruit from wine. Well, I can't, I can't, I can't fault you for that. Good for you. <laughs> okay. Sharon has a question. Uh, I didn't cut back my lavender, so have tall dead stems. Do I just cut them off? Okay, so that's still the flower stems that you're seeing. Uh, I would I would cut off uh, the dead, like flower stems for sure. And if you cut back, um, lavender is kind of like a rosemary in that it can really uh, continue the center let me let me the center can become full of dead uh ungrowable things so it's always good to give lavender a bit of a haircut now i did not do that this year because they were just put in this year so i want them to be have as much uh, ability to uh grow to set roots to uh, get all that good stuff down into the roots uh, but next year, uh, yes, they. I will start uh, cutting them back a good bit because that that's just good for the plant. Now I saw a couple there. I think a couple other questions. Oh, here we go. Oh, that was Sharon. Okay, this is Graham. Hi, Graham. All the jams you've made sound amazing. I'm going to try them all this year. Awesome. And I think um, these next two are, are going to be pretty darn good. Because this one today, the uh, mango jalapeno, it was made from Pomona's pectin. Has a, here's how, here's the ratios of things that you need if you're making a recipe that's not on their website. So th they do not have a man mango jalapeno uh, recipe. So I just used the suggested uh, ratios and it turned out like, I felt like, wow, I'm a jam maker and uh, never was accused of that before ever. So, uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, hi, Joan. Yeah, so that's kind of what I've been up to. Uh, trying to... Uh, I don't know if you can see behind me. I do have one of my uh, levels uh, on my black shelf there. Um with lights on it now and my plants are, that's where I have my onions. That's where I have my artichokes. Uh, that's where I have, oh, my cucumbers. I forgot to, to mention that. Uh, Jesse from plot 37 grew cucumbers uh, in her home over winter last year. And I thought, well, that's a, I would love to do that. So I have two little plants that are started and they've come up and um, yeah, so I'm very excited. So they'll be growing up like the, 
the the uprights on that black shelf behind. Isn't that funny when you're, yeah, that one right there. Uh, they'll be growing up there. So I'm, I'm kind of excited. That's a new thing. I've never grown um, cucumbers in the house. So yeah, that'll be a nice treat in the middle of winter. Um, oh, Karen, that is good to know. Uh, Karen has been using Pomona's pectin uh, for at least a decade. This was kind of a new, this was new to me. Uh, and I thought, well, let's give it a, you know, a real run for its money. Not disappointed one bit. Yeah, no, I, this is my, I would never make jam another way anymore. I, I just cannot believe how much less sugar it takes. Uh, and the fact that it's, um, calcium water, I think it's calcium. Yes. Calcium water. I mean, that's not a bad thing that helps set the jam. So I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, has my office changed color? Well, um, it changed color, uh, several months ago. Uh, but it might be, I have my light on. It's very, um, dingy today it's gray and so i don't know if they maybe just look different but no i've had it i've had it these colors for a little bit this used to be my daughter's my youngest daughter's bedroom and the walls were teal and the ceiling was lime so uh i just wanted something a little a little a little more i don't know age appropriate i wouldn't even say that because i like bright colors so uh, I just was, I just wanted it not to look like a bedroom anymore. Um, oh, thank you. My husband is very kind and brings me flowers a lot. And there, there are a lot of times out in our living room. And I thought, I spend so much time in my office. I'd like them in here. Thank you. So glad you're enjoying them because I, I sure do. Um yeah, Karen agrees. It's uh, the using of less sugar. I, I, I'm always looking for ways to not put sugar in something because it's in everything, which just amazes me. Like it's in ketchup. Why? Don't get me started on on that. Uh, I don't know if Pomona's pectin is available in the UK. I know it's available in Canada. Uh, because I had a a question about that one. I was able to locate it in Canada. I did do a search um, in the UK, and you guys seem to have several varieties of low-sugar pectins, um, which I'm not sure I can get here, so I can't necessarily even try them and say, you know, here's uh, here's a good one to try. But I will continue to look into that because... And I also think um, once, I think once the world kind of really settles from COVID, if we can say there's going to be a settle, I think when it becomes um, more just part of our life, I think our international lines might open up a little differently. And we once again can uh, get things from across the pond, so to speak. I used to, I used to, I love a seed company that's in Ireland. It's called Seedaholic. I felt like it was named for me. I, I thought, how can I not buy, how can I not buy a soma company called that? Love their seeds. Could not get them again. I found them just before the pandemic hit and they are no, they do not ship yet again to the United States. So I'm hoping, uh, because that was a, it's a wonderful seed resource, wonderful seed resource. Uh, oh, okay. Well, thank you, uh, Stephen. Maybe I need to leave it on. I, you know, I, cause sometimes it is so bright in here. I have windows in front of me and to my left. 
And sometimes it's so bright in here. Uh, I almost, I almost can't see the screen because it's so bright and today's so dingy. So I'll have to play with some lighting, I think anyway, uh, because that does make such a difference. Uh, if it's, oh, and, and Brexit. Yeah, I forgot about Brexit. Um, and that, and Brexit really hit like right after the pandemic or during it. I just remember thinking, well, that is just a lot of reasons that I can't order seeds from the UK because I would order a lot of things. Um, yeah. Let me pull this one up. Great to know about pectin and using less sugar. We make gooseberry jam and rhubarb and ginger. Oh, yes. Um, and I will do, I will see what I can do to even maybe get a hold of some that are less, less sugar uh, based pectins. And it's all about what sets the pectin. Um, and sugar is usually the vehicle that sets the pectin and makes it turn into a jam. And with Pomona's, they use calcium water to activate the pectin. I, I don't uh, know exactly how that works, but I am, I, I'm just thrilled. And I love that Karen, I believe it was Karen, had used it for like a decade and thought it was wonderful. So, uh, yes, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, you know, it, yeah, we don't even need to talk about Brexit because... Anyway, um, get Tony to buy the seeds and send them to you, Audrey. Oh, well, you know, thank you. That's true. I do have a few connections over there. <laughs> so, yes, and there's a lovely woman who is from Ireland. Uh, Jackie is her name, and I think she has a channel called Gone Potty Gardening. And she's lovely and she's right there. So I might even, yeah. Yeah. But I bet, I bet Tony could get those from Ireland. Hmm. I will have to see. That would be, that's a great cheat. Um, so, so what are you guys doing at this time of year to Feed that gardening need that I think us gardeners have, even when, you know, crocuses and daffodils and tulips are coming up at the wrong time, and we can't really do much to stop that. Uh, but we know this beautiful gardening year is ahead. Um, I'm enjoying personally that my days are getting longer, that continues to bring me hope that yes, spring will come and we will have the appropriate day length for things to grow. Um, now, what I'm not doing is I am being patient to not start, uh, not start anything too soon. That is, that's a hard thing to do. Um, well, hi, I have a list of gardening movies and documentaries for winter to scratch that. Yes, there you go. That's awesome. Uh, Steven says he watches folks on YouTube. Uh, gotta say I do the same thing. Uh, and it's nice sometimes to watch people in other, like, I think Australia is actually almost totally the opposite of what we are. So it's kind of nice when we're going into the dead of winter, they're going into spring or they're going into, anyway, it's the absolute opposite. So they're at a different season. And I just love watching that because uh, I know we're going to be there soon. 
and it's nice to, I, I don't like it when I can't do anything. Um, so I've got to have something growing. Uh, uh, hi, Stephen. Good to see you. Um, oh, okay. This is not what I, that's okay. We'll, we'll go. I just, I just endlessly look at seed catalogs and websites, making my plan of attack for clearing and developing my plot. Of course, watch all the YouTube. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of fun. I try to, and I think I might have said this before. I try to look at my garden with a clean slate. Like just because I've always always planted my tomatoes there. What if I planted something else? And what if I uh, move my tomatoes entirely so that it's always, it's interesting and it's not so much, it's not so much um, for rotating crops that I do it. I do it more just to keep it kind of interesting. Uh, after I've, after I watch enough um, Charles Dowding on No Dig and he never rotates a thing. I've kind of become a believer in that. Uh, and I don't really rotate much uh, of my crop, but I move them around just for interest and trying something new. Oh, you can get Pomona's pectin on Amazon in the UK. I thought I looked there. Okay. Because I was going to put a link to UK and to uh, US and I could, but wow, awesome. Maybe they, you know, because I have my address here. Maybe they don't ship it here. So they didn't pull it up for me. Oh, that's awesome. That is, Graham, that is a source. Uh, because uh, it, it will change your mind about uh, jams and anything that requires a lot of sugar to um to set the pectin you will you will love that uh robin is saying she saves seed for cilantro arugula, arugula melons and dill now late now making packets for a seed library giveaway wow yeah isn't it amazing the amount of seed i have two varieties uh one variety of pepper uh, that is probably my favorite pepper. It's a, a Korean drying pepper. They're not, they don't have seeds this year. And so I thought, I need to start saving some of these. And then uh, a tomato that I love called Purple Rain. Baker Creek is no longer selling it. So I have enough seed that I thought, okay, I'm saving... Uh, like you can have this tomato, but you need to give me all the seeds out of it. Um, yeah. So good for you. Good for you. Um, oh, Amelia ba Bailey saying, a uh, Bailey, sorry, um, uh, is saying she watches YouTube and talks to many on discord. Yes. Uh, in case you don't know, Potty Mouth Gardening Club does have a Discord. Um, and there's a lot of nice nice gardening conversation going on over there. I think we all just like to we all just like to keep our uh, our toe in the gardening waters, don't we? Uh, and some of this putting uh, you know I, I I consider gardening and preserving uh, all kind of like they all go together as far as I'm concerned, because you got to do something uh, with all that produce that you get. Uh, I'm, I might even be, I think I'm even going to grow a zucchini this year. I, uh, I used to grow zucchinis just because everybody does. And then I thought, I'm not really a lover of zucchini. So I I, I totally stopped any kind of summer squash. And then I rediscovered 
patty pans and picking zucchini really small. They're lovely, really small. Um, anyway, so I, I, I am going to add those back in this year. So, um, oh, Joan, Jean is saying, or sorry, it's Joan. I need, oh, I have to show you. Can I, I don't think I can reach them. My husband stepped on my other glasses. <laughs> so they're like a pancake. And I probably need to start using those on this so I can see everything. Uh, but now they're squished. Um, is anyone doing flowers for the bees? Does anyone have any recommendations? Oh, you know what? The bees. Wow. Last year, I rediscovered a sweet alyssum. Or alyssum. It's just like a little white. I mean, they're... And they are, you can't kill them. I mean, they just spread and grow taller. Uh, and the bees just love them. I also find that my the bees love uh, zinnias, snapdragons. Um, I don't know if there's a pollen-bearing flower that they're not going to love. Um, I, I think I, I've not seen anything where the bees, uh, don't really go near it. Um, uh, let's see, you know, if we have any more questions. Yeah. Yeah. I, summer squash are just like, you know, I hate when, okay, this is maybe just a pet peeve when it's like, well, it, it, it will take any flavor you put on it. Well, I kind of like it if it starts with a flavor and I find that they just don't. Right. I mean, at least cucumber has a flavor, right? Um, try Coco's. I, you know what? I, yes, I have seen that variety. Uh, the two seeds that I have are both, uh, they have like big, it's like a green zucchini, but they have white stripes. And like when you cut them, when you slice them, they look like a little star. Um, oh, the ginger and lemon to my blackberry jams. Well, I am a I am a newbie in the jam world in that I've made you know I think maybe a lot of us when our kids were little you go strawberry picking you go blueberry picking whatever you come home you make some jam so my jams were all very you know plain jam I don't want to make plain jams anymore so I'm trying to up the whole jam game if i'm gonna make it i want it to be something interesting so uh pauline is asking don't sunflowers stop other plants from growing you know uh, there's been a lot of discussion about that over on the potty mouth gardening club i'm i'm still i'm that that I do not accept that quite yet. I know, um, I know some people really believe that to be true. I wonder if it's what you're planting it with. Um, because honestly, I don't want to give up my sunflowers. I just don't. Uh, they're so beautiful. The birds and the bees love them. They're pretty. Uh, so if I have, I guess I'll watch that more this year. Because um, I I have not found that to be the case. However, that doesn't mean it's not true. I'm just not going to. Yeah, I'm just not going to. I'm just not going to do that. What's the best way to start sweet potato slips? 
Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, you can you can bury the potato uh, like half in dirt, so like the like the top of the t potato is still out, but the bottom is in dirt, and that can shoot some slips. I have always done it kind of old school where I put the the potato, you know, half in water uh, and let it root and then it'll shoot slips up uh, the top. And they can happen quickly or they can happen really slow. So I think it's also, so I used to just put them in a sunny windowsill uh, with some water and I was able to get, you know, plenty, but you need to give yourself a bit of time. So I would say, yeah, and I would start them probably soon, just so you know, um, just so you know you've got them, because they're they're really hard to find, at least here, they're really hard to find um, at the time of year that you want to plant them, because most of them are sold out, at least, again, at least here, I'll talk for here. Um, and I used to buy just organic sweet potatoes from the grocery store because uh, I don't know how prevalent Trader Joe's are, but they used to sell, well, they do still sell it, uh, but it's usually around the holidays. They used to sell a purple sweet potato that had like a soft, uh, creamy white interior. And they were a, they were an Asian sweet potato they were, uh, they're magnificent. And so I used to throw those um, in the water and see what happened. And I got plenty of slips off of those. So, and again, if you, you start with an organic, they won't, they won't usually have that. They won't be sprayed with a non sprouting uh, chemical that makes them not want to sprout. Okay. I think I, Okay, we'll we'll talk a little more about sunflowers. It says sunflowers exude something to inhibit other things growing, but I grew sunflower and aster in the same pots last year, and they were fine. That's what I'm saying. I think it's. I'm not sure if it's all anecdotal that sunflowers make things not grow. I also know sunflowers are really useful at uh, cleaning a soil, meaning you know there's a lot of pesticides and things that have been showing up in soils and in bags of soil and a sunflower from my little reading on it helps uh, eradicate some of that. So I think, um, yeah, again, I'm just, I'm not going to call it either way. Um, okay. So, well, gosh, we've been at this almost 50 minutes. So what, maybe this is a good question to ask you all. So what are you doing this week in your gardening? What are, what are you specifically learning about? What are you reading about? What are you being motivated by? Um, not just what, um, yeah, just not just what are we seeding, because again, we're still on that early cusp uh, of seeding. If you're not growing undercover, if you're not, you know, there are a lot of ways to, we need two hours to make up for last week. Oh, Amelia, you you don't want to hear me talk for two hours. <laughs> uh, I think by then I would be definitely, I would start repeating myself for sure. Um, yes. Leanne said that she read that too, that um, sunflowers are useful for cleaning soil. Just don't compost them in the end. Absolutely. Um, this is from Dai. Um, just ordered potato buckets, purchased Dorsey potatoes, and sorting all the seeds out. 
you know, that's a, that's a job, isn't it? It's a fun job. Um, my, my thing right now is I need to make sure that all the new seeds that I've purchased for this coming season are in my database. Cause that's the only way I can keep track of the ridiculous amount of seeds that I have and the varieties It helps me keep, it just helps me stay on track and make sure I don't miss starting my seeds when I need to start them. Um, Amelia's trying to hold back from sowing. And I think, I think that's a challenge really at this time of year, because uh, I mean, even on the thumbnail for this video, those are actually little tomato uh, seedlings. Now that was obviously a, uh, uh, what are they called? That was not my photo. That was a stock photo that I used, but I was like, everyone's going to notice that those are tomato plants and they're all going to think, are you growing tomatoes? I'm not growing tomatoes yet. I am not. I am going to start my tomatoes just a mish early this year because I'm going to be grafting all of my indeterminates. Uh, I really want to see, I used to graft years ago and I kind of got out of it probably because my children were older and, you know, you think when they're little, that's when they need all the attention. Once they get to teenage years, it's like they never stop. So, um, oh, hi, emptiness gardener. Glad you could make it. Um, so what was I talking about? See, that's what happens, Amelia. When it comes to close to an hour, I lose my I lose my ability to concentrate. Um, so yeah, I so yes, I'm not starting tomatoes, even though that was the thumbnail. Um, oh wow. Um, okay, let me let me I'm try to finish my train of thought before everyone goes, who is this crazy woman? Um, yeah, so holding off, I think, is a gardening discipline. And the other thing is, if you do have um, a compost pile that's of, of any significance, you know, if you can't, you could just say, hey, I'm growing compost. I'm growing things to keep my compost uh, really happy. Uh, so, you know, if you do, if you can't, if you can't do it, if you can't, don't have that discipline yet, um, but try, I guess I would say try and, and look for things that really do need long growing period before it gets to like my artichokes. Now they're going to be huge before they go out. And I realize that puts my house um, in a bit of disorder but I'm willing to do that to see those pretty artichokes. Um, but I do realize I have a dozen of them started and that's going to, those are going to be um, big plants before they go outside. And I know that I have to, I have to make room for those somewhere. So that's the other thing. As you get tempted to start things early, Remember, you have to have a place to keep them and to keep them with good sunlight, um, watered well. Um, I do have a, a video coming out on how I do my trays in here because they're on uh, capillary matting. So I only have to water my seedlings like once a week. And that's just to make sure that... Um, the water is available to wick up to them. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot Graham has nine children. Uh, yeah, I only had three. And that was, everyone kept telling me, you know, once you have three, you can have, you know, 15. I was like, really? I'm, I'm, my, I'm good. I'm good with three. Uh, here's a question for the, the, the room. Does anyone use veggie mash mesh? I'm not even sure what that is. It sounds interesting, but I'm not quite sure what that is. 
Okay, so Robin is saying less garlic, more artichoke room. Ah, uh, yes, please. Yes. Yes. I have way cut back on the whole garlic, on the whole garlic thing. So that won't be happening again. What's oh, I have another. Well, sorry, we're gonna take this one first and then we'll go to dye. Will you be letting any of the artichokes go to flower for the bees? Absolutely. Uh, and I was talking about that earlier. Like, I, you know, getting an artichoke, that's nice. And they're wonderful. Like everything else that you home grow, they're just better. But I don't mind letting like half of them go to flower because they're so stunning. Um, that inner, it's like a thistle that comes out of it. I mean, it is. It's gorgeous. So if I don't pick one, I would not, I would not be sad. I would let those absolutely go to flower. This is from Dye. I want to buy a specific cucumber seed, but they only come in packs of 20 from Premier Seeds. How long does it last? Oh, sure. You could, you could use um, cucumber yeah, that would last, I would think that would last for seven years. And honestly, I don't call them out until they're out. Okay, like I, I planted some uh, Elsa Craig onions that were old seed. I'm thinking this was, they were probably purchased, well, I know they were purchased pre-2020, 2020, 2020 uh, or 2019, actually, because I had gotten it from that seedaholic a uh, place in Ireland that I can't get seeds from anymore. Um, so I knew they were old and I planted them. I thought, well, let's see. Now I did get like three onions came up. Uh, so I know, okay, these are dead. These are not viable seeds anymore. Um, so I ordered some new. Uh, so I try, I try everything. And, and a cucumber comes up pretty quickly. So you will know, um, uh, pretty quickly uh, if it's viable or not. Uh, I think I saw another question back here. I don't want to miss. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I realized what I'd done. Oh, it's like EnviroMesh. Okay. I would like, I'm going to do a little investigating into that EnviroMesh. I just use bridal tool. Uh, you know, veils are made out of it. Uh, tutus for little girls are made out of it. Uh, but I think EnviroMesh is tighter. Uh, I just use it because I can buy it like off. I think I buy it off Etsy for like 10 bucks a bolt. And I'm still on like, I don't know where I am on it, but I, I don't use a bolt a year. That's for sure. But I did notice that some white fly got through it and um, some of my brassicas um, were kind of so covered. And that's just, you know, I know it's outside. And even as my channel says, real food comes dirty. I just don't want it buggy. <laughs> you know, I, I don't mind rinsing them off and doing all that stuff, but uh, yeah. Okay, let's see. Any other questions? Oh, uh, Empty nest gardens use tool, but it ripped and I got holes too easily. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, mine is kind of, I, I keep mine down with bricks uh, and it's over, it's over like little hoops. Uh, but I think it might be time to get a little bit more permanent, um, permanent option. Because the last thing I want, hi, Jane's Growing Garden. Uh, 
We use scaffolding net to protect against larger creatures. Yes. Uh, I have seen that too. And I think it looks, uh, it looks great. Uh, so it's all about what you're really trying to uh, protect from, right? It's a lot, it, your net can be quite large if it's a bird you're trying to keep out and it, well, it needs to be a whole lot tighter if you're trying to keep white fly out or carrot fly or any of those other things. Okay, this is Karen. Uh, I found an environment type product in the US. Oh, okay. Oh, well, if if you don't mind sharing what that product is, I think that's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, Karen, if you don't mind, or where do you get it? Oh, it's ag fabric. Okay. I think I've looked at ag fabric. Well, see, it's always nice when you can get a referral uh, or a recommendation and it kind of checks out something you've checked out. Um, yeah, I think that's exactly what I need to get for this season. Huh. Awesome. What would we do without Amazon? I know there's a lot of opinions about Amazon, so I'm not going to. I don't want to, I don't want to start that discussion, uh, but wow, you know, I'll just order it and really it can't come till tomorrow. Really? Really? It can't come till tomorrow. I have to wait a whole day. Uh, anyway, well, now we've gone over an hour. So Amelia, that's for you. <laughs> uh, this was great fun. Thank you all for being here. You're like my 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 garden buds. And uh, when I don't talk to you for a week, um, yeah, I don't like it. So next week, same time, same place uh, from the bustling heart of Metro Detroit. Uh, we will once again talk gardening and we'll be a week closer to um you know getting seeds really going and so we'll try to encourage each other to uh, take a chill and not start too much too soon so be encouraging uh yeah we need to do that uh and i think agrofabric is on my list so you take care and yeah We'll, uh, yeah. Anyway, enjoy this so much. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Always good to see you all. Uh, Joanne, glad you were here. I know you felt a little late, but you know, always good to see you. Okay. So everybody take good care again next Thursday, same time, same place. Bye now.